Okay, okay, folks. And with that, we're getting into it. We are bringing you today more Star Ladders Europe. We've got Vega Squadron versus HR. I am Lama Down Under, joined by PQMZ. How you doing? This game. I'm excited, I'm... but it started a bit earlier than we expected. <laughs> yeah, it's really rare for games to do that. So I'm also really excited to see how Havost ends up seconds, playing with Hellraisers. Yeah, so Hellraisers, I tried to do some research beforehand. Just because of the roster shuffles, it's pretty rough to get info on them. And as I think we all know at this point, they've, they've had some shuffles. On the other hand, unfortunately for Hellraisers, I guess, they're up against, you know, the one team that I would argue the most stable team in the scene <laughs> in Vega Squadron, which hasn't changed since before TI. Almost, you know? Yeah, it's really nice that they're staying together and they're putting out good results from what I can recall. Yeah, they, um, oh, I'm gonna forget what it was called. It wasn't ES, it was, was it ESL New York? I think it was ESL New York, because it wasn't MLG New Orleans. So, either way, we've got some picks and bans coming out, and as expected, Mag's Broodmother banned ruthlessly, as is the IO, both things Vega's pretty uh, good with. And uh, Tusk, SF, which means we get to see the new Doom for the first time. Um, where I still think it's probably really strong. I don't think much has changed, to be honest. It's a small tweak, but the hero still does the same. Yeah. So, I wonder if Vega's gonna run it. There's a lot of options with this hero. I think, actually, maybe the tweaks Ten mean he isn't as viable in a support role, possibly, just because he can't roll over Radiant people so much. The support pick. Doom, which was just ganking everyone, because he's got a million Vega move speed. Squadron. So, to pick. But either way, we've got Dazzle Slaughter coming out quickly and fast. And Slaughter's a hero of host is pretty experienced on. Could also be the offlaner playing it for Hellraisers. I'd favor the offlane still because, as I said before, it just feels a bit clunky when you play it as the short laner. Ten seconds. Yeah, it's suddenly not super easy to itemize. Um, it feels like on the slaughter, if you play it in the one position, how are you getting that mass damage output? So, but yeah, could be a shuckle here, might not be. Either way, Vega pick up the Queen of Pain, who I don't know if you saw the stats, but Queen of Pain, she's got a really high ban pick rate. Uh, not quite 100, but it was above 80% if I recall correctly. And then she has a super low win rate. I think it's no one's best hero, yeah. to be honest. From every game I've seen him play, when he Radiant plays Quark, he just plays back. better. Yeah, Makes he... the hero look first ban worthy. He has a 60% win rate on the Quark, and they've picked it 10 times on this patch, which is just being super comfortable. Um, it is his most played hero on this patch. I think the only thing they've played Ten more on this patch is the IO, and also there's been a lot of Dazzle on Seema. So... Kind of interesting that Hellraisers managed to get that. When I was looking up Seema's stats, it was like almost completely Dazzle and then a few other heroes. Yeah, I think Dazzle just really fits her playstyle because it lets her cores go a bit more aggressive than they normally would. And when you play Quap in this kind of meta game, it's hard to go in if you don't have supports that can save you. But not having the Dazzle is probably going to mean she needs to play a tiny bit more passive. Otherwise. Yeah, I also me. imagine just having seen Vega Squadron's playstyle, he definitely does the He's I go team. off and get pickups, but as you said, in team fights, you're gonna have to be a bit more safe. You're very squishy. Um, and maybe here, not quite sure what the. Depends on what else Hellraisers gets out, but generally, you try to bring some lockdown for a quap, so she may even be forced to go for that early BKB. I'm not particularly sure what they're looking for now. It might be another support, or they might opt to pick up a mid laner that does well against the Quap. There's still Windrun in the pool, which I think is alright. I'd favor having multiple cores here because Doom's just an annoyance to deal with. If you only have one core, it just gets taken out of the game. Quap's a pretty good lane dominator as well. So if she's able to win her lane and you have a core there, it can mess up your lineup a bit. Yeah, and it feels like the Windrun are really nice for Hellraisers just because amp damage combined with Focus Fire, right? Obviously a very strong combo for a Windrunner. And as you said, more cores. Doom can't doom everyone, although Hellraisers... He can try. He can, yeah, he can try. He can certainly go for the refresher build. 
I don't know. It's going to be interesting because we've seen a lot of Slaughters just because of how the hero works. I don't know if I'd bother, bother dooming him, even though Slytherin Crush is a pretty short cooldown. It just feels like maybe you uh, doom someone else and you just kind of ignore the Slaughter. Because yeah, he'll amp damage, but he doesn't do massive damage output himself. So maybe better to doom somebody else. I think it's very situational when you're looking at that. Batrider's another hero, similar theory. You might not want to doom it, but if you can get the doom on that target before the fight starts, it's still 5v4 in effectiveness. Yeah, also I know some folks are probably curious, to my knowledge, this is Havost playing with them. He's been playing as a stand-in some for Hellraisers. Dominator 3000 is Shocklo, I'm not quite sure why his name is showing up as Dominator 3000. And CO, we asked before the game, but he was also, I think they say he's also Womp or something? A name I hadn't heard of. I think we'll just go with CO, right? Yeah, so, he's he's just CO for now, but that's who's playing. And Vega Squadron, pick up the Disruptor, another hero that Seema is very experienced with. Ten and it's nice here against remaining. the Batrider, right? Um, I'm assuming it's a mid Batrider, it could also... Five there are other positions remaining. he can play, but certainly if you need to catch that guy out, getting the Thunder Strike on him and then glimpsing him backwards as he's trying to firefly away into the trees, very helpful. You know, the mid bat's going to require a lot of stacks though, because I don't think the lane is favorable against Quaff. So Vegas it could also be an off laner, and they opt to do slide art. Or maybe what they do is they send the trio top with the Wyvern Dazzle slide art, put the bat rider against the Doom, which is the matchup you can do fine in. Yeah. Then they pick a mid hero to deal with the Quaff, maybe something like Windrunner, or I know TA's banned, but there's still options. Yeah. And. I also wouldn't be surprised, Vega, generally, as you Ten pointed seconds. out, it's Remain. no one's hero, but they've also done some things where no one isn't in Five the mid lane with it, Remain. and sometimes Pasha will be, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit Reserve of time. swap up there, but they've done it before, not as much this patch. Either way, there's still a bunch of heroes that could come out, but I'm pretty sure now this is an offlane doom. I haven't seen- okay! That's one that wasn't on my list. Radiant Actually, it is. The They've run this three times in the past for Vega, so... Apparently, Pasha, he likes his Ursa, and... Kind of interesting here, because you got to go right up to Slaughter, right up to Batrider. He's not a hero that does particularly well against Batrider. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of problems getting kited Five this game, I feel like. Remaining. Between the Grave, the Cold Embrace, and just the general spells from Batrider and Slaughter. Reserve time. So he's going to rely a lot on his team keeping in place or disabling them. But if he doesn't get on a target, then it's going to be flat for whoever it is. Yeah. So they maybe can play the... As long... For Vega Squadron, they might be able to catch people unaware if they get up that really early blink dagger. And then on the other hand, for Hellraisers, I do think they've already got the starts of a lineup that can kite him pretty well. But we will see. And they're... I also think the Wyvern is just really strong here, right? You, you, what's it called? You, Vega squad Winter's Curse, the person to next pick. to the Ursa, and the Ursa just kills their ally, Lickety Split. Yeah, they'll have to be really careful with that, because Doom's generally a pretty tanky hero. Quop's generally pretty mobile, but when you have a bear hitting you, you just fall over. Now, I like the Death Prophet here. It's something different that we don't normally see, but... It synergizes really well with their heroes. They have good pick off between Slider and Batrider. They have good team fight because of the Death Prophet as well. And then they have the ability to push. Nice yeah. to see it's something different. So, and yeah, Reserve nice time. to see a Death Prophet. But for Vega, they need another strong support. They might be thinking about. They run the Bane quite a bit. Would bring some lock down here. Not so sure that it would be good. They're probably looking for something on solo. He could also maybe Lena here. He plays a crap ton of Lena. So. And I'm thinking they run AA as well on Vega, but I'm worried about their lanes if they do so. It's hard to set up the cold feet with a tri lane involving Ursa Disruptor AA because maybe if Disruptor glimpses them back and uses Kinetic Field? Yeah, I don't think AA is ideal here. It's extremely greedy for them. Yeah, it just feels pretty You could see weird. a Rubik, maybe. It's just solid all-around support, and I know Solo plays it well. He's got a lot of niche heroes that he plays, though, so yeah. his hero pulls insanely wide. 
I also wonder if they might go for duels because it often feels like Doom has a hard time solo laning. So maybe they pick up something like the Tusk that can roam, give Duel a bit of help if he's needing it down bottom, because Doom, if he's alone versus Slaughter, Dazzle, Wyvern, he's probably just going to have to go to the jungle. Yeah. I, I still favor the aggro trailing, though, I think, from mm -hmm. HR. Depending what Vegas support is here, if it's something that's susceptible, then I definitely remaining. favor it. Yeah, they play. They have an option. Yeah. As you said, solo plays a lot of stuff. Oh, it is the AA. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner, I believe, is the American phrase. But yeah, solo plays some really out there heroes on this patch. He has a, bu a couple games on Naga Siren and a couple games on Shadow Demon, a guy we never, it feels like, get to see anymore. Unless it's part of some, like, cheesy dazzle heal bomb strat, you know? I think Shadow Demon's fallen off kind of... Uh favorably for him, because I still believe he's a really strong hero in this patch. It's just people prefer Dazzle, Wyvern, the slightly more defensive supports. Yeah. So, it's gonna be Shocklo on that Batrider, most likely meaning it's going off lane. It is a Havos to Slaughter. And, uh, I mean, there's some nice synergy here, right? Between Angel's hero. How did my camera end up over here? My game always spikes when we load in. It's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, Dota has some interesting things uh, to do with costing. So, either way, hopefully we'll be in. And yeah, let's quickly introduce the teams. We've got No One, who apparently is No One and not Noon. I don't know. It was... That was an interesting thread. I don't know if you saw that one. We've got Seema on the Disruptor. Solo on that Ancient Apparition. Doom is going to be played up by Mag. And Ursa on Pasha. Bashu. So. Over for HR, we've got Goddamn on the Winter Wyvern, Havost on the Slada, Satchlo on the Batrider, Seo on the Dazzle, and Afro Ninja on the Death Prophet. Yeah, I'm also really excited to see how this fares. I. I do want to see Havost do well in a new team. 30 seconds. To say it that way. I, I think he did pretty well in Navi, but I just think the team stayed together too long with too many problems. Like, they didn't ever change what they were doing. Yeah. Maybe just that was it. I do really like Vega's response with the AA. You're gonna hurt out on Dazzle. The Dazzle and the AA kind of counter each other from the standpoint of you might be able to frostbite, apply that frostbite debuff from the ice blast onto someone, but Dazzle can always save them with Shallow Grave. On the other hand, you lose a lot of healing utility, and it's certainly really fantastic against that Wyvern where you cold embrace someone to save their life and A just drops his combo on them. So, always fun. This is something they could do a lot though. They have a hero that Pasha plays that is able to either go to the jungle or go and move around. And they have Solo on a hero that's going to have high game impact, so he's probably going to get his level 6 fairly early this game if HR don't put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, this guy is... Solo is good at finding a farm where maybe you don't otherwise get it, and already getting himself some denies. Do yeah, we'll see how this mid lane goes. Pretty standard mid lane action, it's the whole... Let's stick two heroes here. Let's make it a 2v2, uh, which does mean Havost is freed up because Doom forced into the jungle. Mag already in the jungle. Maybe just wanted a good creep or something, but he's already all the way up there. And Batrider, this lane, I would be... I think this lane is going to be where we see the kills because a false uh, one false step from Seema or the Ursa, I think you can go down to Batrider Sticky Napalm. At the same time, they can just glimpse him into an awful position. And that is a dead Batman. Hours. He's pretty safe for the first few levels, but as you say, as soon as Glimpse comes online, he has to play a lot safer. I... This ward at the side is going to help him a lot. Yeah, really nicely done there. I actually think he's got decent kill potential, depending on how this lane goes. Um, I really like that they're running it 2-1-2 for now, just because I think if Disruptor can get up that Glimpse, you immediately can bring more health. But Seema already having six slots and... Oh, sorry, six stacks of Sticky Napalm? That's... That's not fun to be walking around with. It's a nightmare to try and 1v1 Batrider as a support. Yeah. It really is just hell. Luckily he's got the parry that can help him out though. If Batrider ever goes and the Earth is in range, he can scare him away. He has to be careful with his positioning. If he's off to the side too much and the Earth is not close, he can die. At least at level 2. 
I think that's the biggest window. If he gets level 2 first and Disruptor doesn't have any spells to make the distance. Yeah. And it looks like whoever is on... It looks like Goddamn has some idea of where the wards are because he just pinged this area. So I think he's like, let's go check. We might want to pull. Although, if there's no one in your lane, maybe you just push the tower for HR. They've got a lot of freedom. I do imagine though Doom, yeah, he's got a TP up, so I think he's gonna just find what he can in the jungle and then when the wave is up on his tower, go down to get some experience. I like the fact that he's gone to the woods to start, and especially getting the frost armor creeps really lucky for him. It makes him really hard to zone out early game. Yeah. Doom, you start with zero armor, I think. Very little armor. You point yeah. seven. Point seven, there we go. So not one of the few heroes that starts with negative, but it still sucks, and no one getting a lot of that arctic bone on him. He The, the wyvern's still mid. I didn't expect him to stay for so long. Huh. I, I think she went for the stack at the minute mark, and then she's come back to do another arctic burn, which is pretty standard stuff, I'd say. Not really needed bottom. Oh, we so have an aggressive just... blink in from no one, and Nafa Ninja is going down, but oh, it's denied! Oh, well played, which means that we get first blood elsewhere on the Batrider up in top lane. It looks like just the chilling touch was used. Too many auto attacks from AA, and oh, that deny. That was really good. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for no one, but at least they still get the first blood. Elsewhere. Yeah, they get the first blood on top, and I think not having the Death Prophet in lane for a while will certainly make them pretty happy. Vega is trying to 1v1, goddamn, who has a haste, and now in comes Sharklow. Sharklow's probably gonna get this. Can the Disruptor do any sort of thing to deter the Wyvern who is hasting away with the Thunderclap? Just gonna get out on 30 life, but... Oof, this top lane... I think we're right in calling it where there's gonna be a bit of slay going down. Yeah, the supports from... HR don't have the biggest mobility, but the ability to move around early, so it might take a while for them to be really active with their two cores. Yeah. Where Vega can maybe look to rotate around and make their supports seem useful, especially when Seema gets maybe level 2 in the glimpse and boots. Now both her boast and this Osa farming really well. I feel like they both have blinks, which they can go, which are super explosive. Would you prefer that Pashabashu gets up some sort of lifesteal for sneaking an early Roshan, or do you think this game is just going to be all about the aggression? I f would personally prefer to see, maybe he goes for a boot upgrade first, and then gets like the Morbid Mask, so he can transition into the jungle, because he needs to give his supports levels this game. They're both really dependent on getting their level 6 to have big game impact. It, it goes for the blink, that's slightly riskier, because then you have to move around and get kills, as opposed to just sitting in your woods and farming. Yeah, they've definitely got a conundrum, I think, here, with how exactly does your Osa itemize to not be kited so hard. BKB, while it'll help you with a couple things here, it doesn't save you from Winter's Curse, it doesn't save you from Lasso, and it doesn't save you from all the physical damage of Death Prophet, so not sure that's the item here. Maybe you have to Lincolns. Just... Yeah, Lincoln's might not be too bad. There's a lot of visual spells, but Amp Damage is such a low cooldown. It has a really long range as well. Yeah, it feels really hard for a Bam Anosa to itemize this game. I'm not sure what is the best route. He may just end up tanking up, as we said. He's going to get the phase boots, probably get some form of lifesteal to be able to get Roshan, and then maybe go from there. I think having the Aegis is the most important item for in this game. The rest of his item kit is suspect the the situation. If he has an Aegis, he doesn't mind if he gets kited around a bit and maybe dies. Because his team's going to be able to do work while they're kiting him. Yeah. And they've certainly got other heroes that can be impactful if this Ursa does need space. You got Doom, you got Sonic Wave. There's space to be made by the lineup of Vega. And now talking about HR, I'm assuming Batrider, he Radiant seems to have one build. You get up attack. shoes, maybe tranquils, you get up uh, a blink and then a full staff. Is that about it for that guy? You're just going to be desperately searching for that since you're an offlaner? I could also see a Yules this game, but that's just more kiting for the Ursa and possibly more setup for the rest of his team. Yeah, he has a nice triple stack here as well to pull back on. 
Yeah, I feel like if you can get the... Oh, we have a stun out on Solo on the bottom lane. Slithering Crush, Heal Bomb. But Solo, he's put down the slow. One more auto attack will do it. And this TP, it's going to take too long. But here comes no one. The glimpse backwards as well. And Havost is dead. And Sio, now in the danger zone, trying to TP out. They don't have any form of stopping. So Sio is just out of the building. So, well done there, but at the same time, looks like Bearman getting a kill up on the Batrider pops that Enrage, and I was just going to mention that, as you said, the Yules, it doesn't purge off Enrage, but it can spend enough time that the Enrage is, you're not in the fight, taking 80% less damage. Movement speed also helps, it's just, you could also maybe look for a Ethereal Blade as opposed to going for the Yules if you have a bit more money to help your teammates out. Yeah, but that'll be very late. I don't know how much farm this Batman, this Batrider is going to get given the state of this game. So, um, a nice thing there, since Death Prophet is off, uh, going home, returning to base, they're getting some nice levels out onto the Wyvern. At the same time, no one's scouting for some stacks. May just kill Alpha Ninja from behind. Actually, Didn't skill with ulti at six. Yeah, I was about to comment on that. Wasn't really expecting that. I've seen it done, the past. Mostly it's like offlane pops where you just want to get the two points in dagger to win your lane and then you want the levels in scream. But it's really fallen off as a build recently. Definitely seems it's like having seven, the early damage output and being able to ult down someone and then just kind of return to farming in your lane is really powerful. Especially with the squishy supports we've got here. A wyvern you can kill with a scream ult combo pretty handily. So. Maybe a few auto attacks needed. We got a gank though. Like, Batman is about to run into Seema. Seema's gonna pop that onto Shocklow's head. And now Shocklow, this is exactly where you are. Use the flame break, but this is not enough. And now maybe the Wyvern, but they have a really easy way with the Wyvern to deal with the Ursa. And suddenly the Ursa on the back line being kited a little bit. But Ursa turning around, handing it back. There's the cold embrace we were talking about, making it super easy. But the Fury stack still coming out, and it looks like Dazzle is dead. Really unfortunate that they stacked those. Also, Dazzle had just used his TP, so there was no way out. And now, no one coming up here. Gonna use that. Sonic Wave, just gonna auto attack her down! And the Wyvern is very dead. Ancient Apparition dies to the tower, I think, up there. No, it looks like he was trying to walk away and the creeps got him. Rip AA. Yeah. That's a really small thing from HR, but if the Dazzle managed to TP to the tower first before the Wyvern, I think the Batrider would have been able to skate away there with a Grave. But because the Wyvern TP'd first, it took the Dazzle way too long. Might have also been like bad TP placement because I think the Dazzle came over here, opposed to closer to the Batrider, so maybe yeah. he wouldn't have been in grave range. But then they both feed anyway, so it's just really nice play from Vega. And it's not really something that Pasha Bashu needed. He was already doing well on CS and farm. We can see he's one of the top net worth heroes. Got quite a bit of gold saved up, so it looks like both he and Havost are working towards that blink dagger. And speaking of Havost, gank train on him. He's getting healed up, but a sonic wave comes out. Shallow Grave is there. Can he sprint away? He's gonna go for the TP, but was it soon enough? And it looks like it was. Will he die in fountain to dagger? No, he's healed up enough. Now the turnaround. Dazzle in a lot of trouble. And Wyvern even, they can just keep walking down on her. There's the nice little kinetic field to stop her from doing anything to Mag, because here comes Ninja and no one more than enough mana to blink out. Can they catch this disruptor on the side here? It doesn't look like they know about Seema. So Half and NJ probably just going to try to push the tower with this exorcism. I don't think you'll be able to get it, but you can definitely put some damage onto it. Yeah. I mean, at least you're using your your spells instead of just uh, wasting it there for a gank that didn't quite happen because of the immediate TP out of Mag. I have to say that was a nice play. The moment he saw Half and NJ, he just TP'd. Unfortunately, didn't have enough HP to survive the Crypt Swarm. Or is, is it Crypt Swarm? I think it is, right? Which one? Yeah, Death yeah. Prophet's Q. Crypt Swarm. I wasn't sure if it was Carrion Swarm. Might be something else I'm thinking of, though. I'm not sure what Carrion Swarm is, but it does sound like an appropriate name for her. So, this bat riding Might have is... been Dota 1. Yeah. Just Dota 1 things. Uh, now we've got Havost in the top lane. He's getting really close to that Blink Dagger. He needs somewhere to farm safely. And back Fortunately, right with, when the Quap's ult is up, he's quite susceptible unless his supports are there. Well, we have a bunch of people rotating down. Is the Slithering Crush going to come on Mag? There's the amp damage as well. He does. He's just going for the TP again. Do they have any way to stop him? Doesn't get... Havos doesn't have Bash skilled. 
Not gonna get lucky bashes if you don't have bash skilled. And another just really well timed TP out from Mag. And as you talked about solo, chillaxing in mid, level 6 at 10 minutes in. That's fantastic timing for him. And Seema as well. The supports are doing really well. Yeah, taking a Goddamn's look. almost got 6 as well though, so they're not too far behind over on health raises. No, but just having them a little bit behind. Yeah, Seo just got 6, Goddamn is approaching it. But just a little bit behind and maybe they can make something big happen with this AA Bloss that just came online. Right, so. they're going for a dual smoke, maybe the pop and disruptor look for a kill while the Asa the goes into Roche. Is under attack. It's gonna be rough, it looks like there are 4 members of HR, they're very aware that it could be Roche on time. They put down a ward but they see all of this, but with a DD on no one. Momo should be able to blink over this kinetic field, they actually glimpse goddamn over it. Sonic Wave used on him as well, and the scream, that's a very dead Wyvern. And now we've got Dominator, he's gonna be fine, he's gonna TP out. They're looking for the rest of them though, Osa going hard on CO. Slithering Crush coming out of her voice, but here comes no one, and no one gonna see what she can do. But yeah, she blunk oh into a... a uh, exorcism and now it's doing mad work on Pasha Bashu. Will they be able to stop her with the kinetic field? Yes, they will. And it looks like Affin and Jay won't be able to chase this. But as you saw, the quap melts to the exorcism. And now Havos thinking about going in on Seema the Slayer. Got the sprint, pop some uh, stuff for the uh, stun. And Slithering Crush gonna mean that they get disruptor. So a nice turnaround coming from HR, an overextension from no one. A tiny bit too deep. It, it was a really nice fight for them, even though the AALT whip, they just managed to uh, overpower HR. Tiny bit too deep as you... Yeah, sounds like you need to move your mic a tiny bit closer again. Maybe. Okay, it away. I've done. Excellent. So, yeah, just a really nice fight there. Queen of Pain is also all going on. God damn, I was going to talk about her item build, but no time there. And she has to be careful, very aware of her previous blink-in that was dangerous. But we have a pause. Probably going to be her host. And I don't know, we just have a go again. Maybe it was a misclick by Batrider, not quite sure what's up with that. Looks like no one's gonna be able to get out of this one fine, although she does still have Blink at level 1, she eats the Crypt Swarm, she's TPing, she's getting ready to go back in, we have a Doom onto Batrider and the glimpse back on Alpha Ninja, here comes an AA Blast as well. No one getting very low there, and now the rest of Hellraiser is wanting to get out, and now the overextension, it's, it was on Hellraiser's. I think that's gonna secure Vega the Roshan as well, so... Favorable for them. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if these supports try to do something. They do have Lasso up on Batrider. I don't think it's unreasonable to try to do that. They're gonna D ward though. There comes the flame break and the immediate takedown of Sharklo. Havos gets a three man slithering crush. Can they do this with a splinter blows? They get one. The static storm is dropped by Havos, playing on the outer edges, and then the Winter's Crush shallow grave Winter's Crush shallow grave. I don't know if they'll catch Pashu Bashu, but they do, and now Mag probably gonna fall. But a big A blast is Havos gonna be right in it. Looks like he is. Can Mag do enough damage though with a level one blast and Havos? I feel like he's very low, he, he's not going to shatter. So, if Doom managed to get his level death off, or one more right click, that was for death of him. Yeah, it was very close. Very well played engagement by HR. I thought Havost was going in, doing Havost things with that three man slithering crush, netted them the kill. I think the Shallow Grave could have waited a few seconds, but that is, that is not important there. They did very well. One other thing to note is Baker placed a ward here and here, and they both got dewarded. So I think as soon as this ward expires, which is really soon, their only vision is going to be this one for a very long yeah. time. They did just manage to deward a an HR ward there, so they're not. It's not the worst, but it's also not great to have your awards immediately dewarded now. Taking a look around. I'm trying to find my hero level ski. There, we, there we go. Disruptor now, bottom of the, after those kills, especially since HR got them on their supports, got some good levels there. At the same time, we're not even at level 2 ultimate, so it's not a big deal. And this game, really even. Vega was pulling a little ahead in experience and gold, and now we're right back down to that zero marker. If this uh, game... Russian's going to be the big point of contention for the next few minutes. Yeah. Both teams have super fast rush on my lineups. You can use that amp damage, you can use that exorcism to make sure you get it. How do you feel about these teams' lineups late game? I think I have to give the edge over to Vega. I think Vega scale a lot better into the game. Just they have three cores that attack. offer something in fights as opposed to HR who... That right is pretty much a lasso. Blada can scale as we've seen, but he's Dyer's more of just an initiator. So it's attack. mostly on the death profit ulti, which is a really long cooldown. 
Radiance top tower has I think it's harder for them to execute what they need to do to win the game, whereas Vega have the ability to make more mistakes. Definitely. Although, speaking of mistakes, is Havost going to try to catch out Mag here? Isn't able to quite get in range. He really wants to go for it, and I think he's going for a Vanguard. I think it might be even a Crimson, because it's against the Earth, so they don't have the biggest right clickers either. Definitely help their ability to fight and push early, which is what they need to do. Oh, we've got Pashu Bashu returning to farming. Has gone the Vlads. Um, I. How do you feel about Satanic now on Ursa? Because the Fury Swipes were changed, so you could have a lot more options with attack modifiers. Oh goodness, but speaking of it, we don't have time. We've got Exorcism. Pasha Pasha is melting to this Exorcism. He's going to go down. A lost everything, just delaying his death. The Yule's up as well, but now Barrider going in the sidelines. He finally dies the Crypt Swarm. A beautiful Winter's Curse taking out both supports for the lineup of Vega. And looking like HR has handily won this fight. Batrider is still going in on the back lines. Wyvern may have died to someone, but I don't think they even care. And they're very happy with this. And it looks like no one gets bashed to death. How oh, well played from Havost. Skills up one point in that bash and this secures them the Roshan even though they don't have exorcism I think using that amp damage they should have enough between all of them to take it down I don't know if you saw that Winter's Curse it was beautiful coming out of the Wyvern just completely took the supports out of the game yeah Chef played that fight really well they got the lasso on the supports and managed to run them down as well after the Winter's Curse unfortunately when as a blink in, he got scouted immediately. I liked the attempt where he tried Your to sneak the Roche, but h knew exactly what was going on. They managed yeah. to punish it. Let's see if they can do anything on the return. There's the glimpse back, the immediate TP out. We've also got Seema going down on the Disruptor and Havos. Actually, Pasha Bashu is trying to chase him, but isn't going to be able to make anything latch. So. Who ended up getting the Asian? I'm guessing, yeah, Havos picked yeah, it up. Yeah, we put it on Havos. Makes Fence. sense. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Hero can do a lot more with that Aegis, and there is the Vanguard up. Let's do a quick look around at items, because a crap ton has happened. Wyvern's rocking that Soul Ring, gonna be working towards a Glimmer Cape there. Slaughter is up on the Vanguard. Batrider, still not the blink, but about to have it in a few shakes of a lamb's tail. Dazzles oh, that is so late. It is really late, but it feels like he's still been able to do some good team involvement. And it is the Yules from Athenindia. So. I'm yeah. guessing he just didn't let have the stats, and it was for Death Prophet who ended up taking them. Yeah, Death Prophet got to take them. Vos going in again onto Solo. Want us to use this Aegis, and Solo goes down before you can blink even. And that is. Ancient Apparition off the deck. This push is going to be easy peasy. Sometimes a nice time, nicely timed Ice Blast can deter your push. No such luck when your AA is dead. And HL suddenly at a staggering 3k gold league lead after being behind for most of the game. And a 5,000 experience lead. This Orchid no longer, I feel, doing work on the Queen of Pain. It can just be Yulsed off by the Death Prophet. I guess you can do it to the Dazzle and get a pick off, but they are not staying alone. is under attack. Yeah, I think that's just a slight oversight by no one, because if you went for Axe this game, you'd be a tiny bit tankier, and their team fight would just synergize a bit better. Every time they're pushing, they have to worry about Quap ulti plus AA ulti. Right now, Quap ulti's on such a long cooldown, they might be able to win a fight with it, but then as soon as HR respawn, they can just go for a push and they don't have too much to worry about. We've I like got, the a top lane. Yeah, we got the Yules up on the Disruptor, but now Afa Ninja is silenced and can't Yules herself. But this is going to be Sonic Wave on the sidelines. They're trying to pick off the supports. We've got a lot of stuff going off. The immediate TP Shallow Grave. Let's see if Afa Ninja can be saved by this Winter's oh, Cold Embrace. But that is a dead Death Prophet walking over there. And now Doom thinking about going further onto Goddamn. But backing out, he actually has a Blade Mail. I wanted to talk about this, but the fight broke out. I haven't seen a Blade Mail on Doom in a while. Normally, the pickups we've been seeing are more things like the Blink. Like the auras. I oh. really like it this game actually. It's gonna do a lot of damage to the bat in general. The Death Prophet's spirits she can't control too well, so manages to chunk the doom, she's gonna drop herself. Even the Wyvern has a lot of damage she can't control. It's a very regular pickup, but I think it's smart from Mag this game. Yeah. So a nice play there. Ancient Apparition also being the own carrier. We're much more used to AAs getting 
a Midas up. It's still something Solo could go for, but he's just going to have a hell of a time farming. And that Aghanim Scepter, I feel, that's the whole reason you pick this hero. You can't be playing an AA without him having an Ags. He's just not as good. The t duration on the Frostbite is, or on the Ice Blast is so pitiful. Um, and I think against this heal lineup, you want it to be as long as possible. Dazzle. However, with how they've been playing this game, he just hasn't had the space. He's tried to be that one off to the side farming lanes when they're trying to take engagements and throwing a long range blast, but hasn't been able to play the game he wants to this time. 100%. Death Prophet looking like she's working towards that Shiva's God. She's also got the makings of probably an Octarine for her, and we have a pick off on Pasha Bashu in the middle as I'm looking at Death Prophet's item. Her boast uh, and. Shock, Shocklow thinking about going top, top for more. So a nice pick off there on the Ursa. That's pretty damn huge. He just kind of walked into them. I'm guessing his camera was somewhere else at the time because he saw the smoke break like around here, and he just kept walking into them. They didn't even have to blink at all. So I think if he was on his hero, he could actually maybe survive there if he just blinks away closer to his team. Yeah, happens unfortunately sometimes. In the meantime, uh, Death Prophet, she is working. What are we doing? We're seeing Havos go again. He's just going to pick up Solo here. One more auto attack. The Cold Feet, maybe they proc doesn't look like it. They pick up the Wyvern in the mid in the meantime. But can no one get away safely? It looks like the Quap will. And Havos also TPing out. So we got supports dying all over the map. Were you watching mid? No, I didn't catch that one. I caught the Havos. The, the Wyvern literally walked this way past three heroes, and then mm. Quap was like, well, he must be alone, right? And then he just died. Yeah, maybe I'm not some quite folks... sure what he was trying to do there. Maybe some folks not looking at their poor thing as they go. We've all done it. We're going to have Havos, though, saying hello to Pasha Bashu, and he's going to be taking a lot of damage here. Amp damage. You can enrage, but you're still taking a crap ton of physical damage. But H.O. not able to finish him off, and it looks like maybe this team fight not going to be in their favor, especially if this Ice Blast hits on only two, but that might be more than enough for no one to think about engaging. The Sonic Wave is back off of cooldown, and they can see what they want to do, but H.R. backing up. This exorcism's down, that's their, that's their time to fight if they want to at all. Unfortunately, yeah. this ward's scouting, it, I think it's all the smoke, yeah, they just pinged it, so they know exactly what's happening here. Yeah, and HR all backing out, gonna get themselves to safety. Now, Havost, he's working on the BKB, we've discussed this before, not sure what exactly is the best to go next, he might pick up an AC, but Slaughter feels like a hard hero to itemize for early damage output, and... He's certainly not going the omelette build, which I think is another option, but he would have already picked that up if that was his plan. And you can't really omelette do it against AA. AA. Yeah. very risky. Yeah, that's scary. I, I'd like the AC afterwards. I'm kind of surprised he didn't go for the Crimson, but probably just realizing he wants to scale a bit more into the game and he's not going to be able to get an overwhelming lead early mm -hmm. enough. We got an A blast that'll hit on one. It looks like we've got a tower siege, and with the exorcism down, I don't know if HR wants to take this. A long time on that exorcism as well. They're all weaved up, and Batrider, Havost actually the one to go in first down. Batrider pulling Pasha Bashu. Static Storm on top of no one, but and this Winter's Curse on Mag, it's not going to drag in anyone. It does lock him down. Pasha Bashu still at half health. Sonic Wave comes out onto Havost, and all of that reflected damage with the Blade Mail doing good work. Pasha Bashu also still fine on the back lines, but everybody's healing up from the Dazzle. It looks like Havost is ready to go in again. Mag now taking a lot of damage with a glimpse back from Havost. And they're just still chasing on Mag. They have so many blinks, so much maneuverability. At the same time as Afa Ninja taking a lot. A Blast completely gonna whiff. The Mag Doom finally goes down. And without the Sonic Wave, it doesn't feel like they have the damage. Seema might go down here as well. There's a Bash to finish it off before Seema can do anything. Couldn't even get the glimpse off. By the time this tower's down, Exorcism's up, so they might be able to go bottom next. Yeah, go bottom, maybe even put some damage on high ground. So I think bottom is certainly the safer choice, and we'll be finding out how long on the Roshan respawn. Hopefully it's a longer Roshan for Vega, because at the moment, Hellraisers are in control of this game. If the HS spawns, when they have Exorcism up, I think they can take it quicker than Vega can react. But they still have this tower to TP to. Maybe that's the first objective. So, when you're here playing as Vega, you know you're a bit behind. It definitely does feel like your heroes scale well into the late game. Although, I would say that... Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I would say that both sides have supports that scale pretty well, but I definitely like a Osa uh, core over a Slaughter 
Are you just trying to wait it out? Maybe lose a few towers in exchange for getting up that extra form? Is it time to look into seeing about smokes? All of which are on cool... Yeah, they have two in stock on Vega, all on cooldown for HR. I think the Quap BKB is the first thing they really need to get before they look to be too aggressive in fights. The S has nearly finished his Basher as well, so that's a bit more pickoff potential for him. But it's not a good fighting item right now. And I think HL's been doing a really good job of people are moving around in pairs at the very least, so this pickoff potential of the Osa really nerfed. Other than a few missteps that both sides had where they had heroes alone, they're really, it hasn't been an easy game for Pasha. Now here comes the smoke from Hellraiser's is looking for a pickoff. Yeah. And I think they'll probably be the ones to find it. They're getting ready to go in. They've got Barrett leading the charge. He manages to grip the AA. The rest of the team will have to fight about this. But Havos immediately picking off Seema the Slayer and Solo getting super low. There's no AA blows for this fight. Maybe they slowed up goddamn, but no one now isolated and taking way too much damage. And the remnants of Vega need to run the hell away from Hellraisers because they are ready to fight. Havos doesn't even care that he's doomed up. This is what happens. Fortunately, the creeps are all the way back here, so... Not an immediate tower push. Yeah. Nexus is going to be out before they can do anything, and Roche also won't be out. Yeah, they're so. checking the Roche. I think they're hoping that he was up or something. They're like, maybe, maybe Roche on? But no, it looks like Af and NJ will have to push this tower without spirits. They can definitely do that. It's just going to be a lot slower. They get have time to respond. Maybe throw a buff ulti into an AA blast if they clump with it too much. Yeah. And let's see if the A is up in time. We've got no lasso, but it's going to be up in 20 seconds. And the blink forwards from Pasha Basher. He wants to go on her post, but a winter's curse, and he walks back into Seema. At the same time, Goddamn is getting very low. Mag is up on the front lines, and he is going to go down. Goddamn's going to fall as well. Seo is super low. The A bloss might actually make him tick out. He does. He shatters to it. And now Havost on the sidelines, and a lot of trouble. Death Prophet dies. Can they stop Havost? No, doesn't look like it. Pasha Basher not in range to get off that bash, and... I think a good that turnaround. That was huge. Yeah. Hit four heroes followed by a quap ulti, which I think at least hit two. Might have clipped three. Yeah. A big needed fight for Vega to get themselves back in this game. Although I still think, as we've pointed out a number of times, this game all about the Roshan. And because of that fight, it is firmly in Vega's hands. I don't think they have the way to stop it right Radiant's now. Bottom tower is under As... That's what I meant earlier when there's more room for mistakes on Vega. They took one or two bad fights where multiple heroes get picked off, but they make one defense just using their ultimates properly, getting pretty good bump from Hellraisers, and then they just get lucky on the rush spawn. They're back in the game. Welcome to Dota, everyone. That's how it works. Uh, full stuff is going to be up on Batrider though, so maybe able to get those more clean pickoffs coming out of him. And I really like this. Dazzle is picking up a pipe. I really, really like this. It's something that we don't see a whole bunch on teams. Um, we've been seeing a bit more of it after it got a bit of a buff, but certainly an early pipe, or well, early by Dazzle standards as a support, we're gonna help them against this AA, and he's not gonna have the Aghanims up for quite a while still. As you say, it's really unusual for them to go that route, but it's definitely more effective than the mech at looking what they want to do this game. By the time the Aegis is out, he should have it as well, so that would be their timing window that they aim for. Yeah. But AA will have his axe as well soon. Yeah, he's getting close. He got a lot off of the back of that next fight. I just wonder how much, whether he'll able to be able to seal the deal on the next 500 or if they'll make him buy wards. Although Disruptor has been doing a lot of that. So I wouldn't be surprised if Vega just says, Seema, you buy everything. We just really want AA to get that Ags. And it's one of those things where, depending on how the next team fight goes, if they take a bad engagement, maybe Solo gets picked off, I wouldn't be surprised to see him sell items to get the Ags for the high ground defense. Yeah, that's something I was thinking as well. Personally, I wouldn't want to do it, but yeah. if I saw them pushing, they have Asia, so they probably won't push. But I would just sell items to get the Ags. It depends. Right, gonna scout the smoke. Yeah, and he's gonna pull Seema. Can they do some sort of follow up? In comes the Doom onto Afa Ninja, and now they're working on her boost. They have so much damage. There's gonna be a beautiful Ice Blast, too. Sharklow is just dead, and they managed to catch Seo on the edge, trying to go for the TP out, but they should have stuns here. No, they didn't get any of them. Seo, I think, still shatters. Yeah, still shatters in the fountain. Doom technically being credited with the kill. So, a nice few pickups from Vega and HR, I think, their lead probably all gone at this point. And Mag managing to find the Death Prophet before she got Exorcism off is huge as well. If they can do that, it's a one fight straight up. Yeah. 
So, Vega getting everything they want, fighting with this Aegis up. They've got another Radiant's three minutes on it as well. Can feel very, very safe. Might not be high ground, but they can definitely rotate bottom afterwards to yeah. clean up the tier one. Maybe get some wards out as well if they have any. And there are no more smokes on each other still for another two minutes. It feels like they just need to dodge until this Aegis is down. Yes, definitely. They could maybe look at her split push with the Death Prophet ulti, but that's still risky because Vega have decent catch when the Disruptor's in position. Yep. Now, Hobos has had this BKB for a bit, at least long enough that he's gotten two charges off on it. I'm not quite sure what he's going next with his 1400 gold. I didn't see anything of his on the courier. I'd like to see an AC. That's probably the item he goes for as well. Good against the air, so it's very good with the Death Prophet. And I also like the fact she picked up Octarine. I think this item's pretty much replaced the Bloodstone on Death Prophet now. Yeah, certainly with the nerfs to Bloodstone. Let's see if they can get the jump here for HR. They have to kill off. I feel like they have to kill off the Doom before he gets Doom. Here they go. They're going in. They're trying to pick off no one here. Havost already BKB'd. If they kill off the Quap, it's a lot of damage, but they aren't and managed, able to make it latch. But Ninja in the back lines already has used that Exorcism right where no one is. Pashu Bashu working on Goddamn, but with that Glimmer Cape and the Shallow Grave, doesn't look like he's going to go down. A nice Winter's Curse on Mag. They've already lost their supports, though. Does Havost have the follow up damage? Pashu Bashu is going to go down. That's an Aegis. Can they isolate him for the second attempt? AA is way out of the fight. Queen of Pain trying to help him out. They're the blink away from the respawn. Batrider thinking about coming in. He doesn't have the lasso though, and this just could be the end of it. But Havost, he wants the Slytherin crush. He catches Solo. They may just give this up, but they're going back in on Vega. Sonic Wave going to go on Afa Ninja. Havost managing to be out of it, and it looks like no one has overstayed his welcome. Actually, blinks over into the death. Bash oh gosh, yes, he gets the bashes. He's going to get Shock Glow as well. Can he catch him? Batrider trying to bat rider away and he does manage to. So a really messy team fight for both sides. I have to say I think HR came out on top. Technically they got five kills, although one was an Aegis respawn, but such a mess. Considering they were fighting into Aegis, that went really well. I think it was mostly just the angle that the fight took place up, they could not expecting it. Yeah. Really nice job also from Afa Ninja. I really liked the play where Quap blunk backwards into the exorcism of Death Prophet. So. I really liked that the team kind of went like this and she managed to move around to try and catch the backline as you said if Quap's blinking out and it also meant she didn't get doomed. Yep. Very important. Yeah, she used that exorcism. I almost thought maybe it came out a little bit earlier than you'd want, but it when you're fighting against a doom, you have to use it before you get doomed, so that's that. Solo now, Chillaxin. Uh, has up the Aghanim Scepter and Boots. Didn't have to sell anything for it, so surviving that last fight or oh, well he walked back like this, and I think that was, I want to make sure I buy this, get out. Um, Disruptor now, I think you give him a chance to farm, because his Aghanim's upgrade is also super powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. Solo should definitely transition into the ward buyer for now, but I don't think Solo is a ward buyer. Having played against this guy, he does not like to play the support, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll see. I think it's really important. Disruptors Aghanims could destroy HL's team fight. They've got a couple of BKBs and just things like trying to get out or buy time in that uh, static storm with the Yules. And here's the engagement coming out from Vega. We're about to see an A ball super early on the wrong side of the fight. A beautiful Winter's Curse. Pasha Bashu is going down. They've already got the exorcism out. An immediate kill on the A, on the Ursa. We're going to be seeing more people falling for Vega if they can't escape. No one's popped her BKB. Do they have the immediate silence follow up? She is silent. She's stuck. She's taking too much damage. All of that physical stack up and the amp damage and no one is burned through. Like paper, that analogy doesn't work. Havos now wandering around, doomed up, but he doesn't care. And that was a beautiful turnaround. I have to say that Winter's Curse was amazing. HR definitely knew exactly what was happening there. The positioning was on point. Vega just running into them, which I was kind of surprised about. Solo being in the front line like that, just completely wasting his ultimate. Obviously, when you get popped, it's a bit of a panic, but... Yeah, maybe he wasn't sure that they were all there. Oh, you're blowing into your mic a little. Yeah, this is Sorry. the problem. We gotta have it close enough that it picks you up, but then it... <laughs> Const oh, oh, technical issues. But yeah, it felt like the rest of HR did a really good job of kind of being sneaky over there. So, Because I think that for some reason, Vega thought they were going onto a solo dazzle. At least the way solo played. Just AA blasting the dazzle. 
Yeah, maybe they just misinterpreted where the rest of Hellraisers were, thinking that, as you said, they just found one hero. Now, if you are a goddamn here, do you immediately purchase up a blink dagger with your 2.7k gold, or are you saving up for a refresher? I could see a force or a blink for sure. I think refreshers very unlikely just because his mana pool's way too low. You could opt to not skill his ultimate when he hits 16 as well, which would make refresher a tiny bit more feasible. Yeah. I also but the rest of his spells still cost a lot of mana. Yeah. I also want to point out that Shocklo doing something I'm super excited to see. Going for the Aghanim's upgrade. He's also had one of his supports buy him up a gem. So the map vision coming out of HR going to be much stronger once they get over to some of those wards. Assuming they don't manage to lose this. And Havos uh, does look like he's going for the AC. I'd really like to see Refresher Ag's Batrider. That, that could be a sight. Four targets at once? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I I don't... I have to be honest, I've seen a few Aghanim Scepter Batrider games and I still haven't seen the double latch. So, A actually hiding up in the trees here. If he blasts them from behind, he's going to give away his positioning. That's oh, so risky when you're playing against a Batrider, though. Yeah, he immediately just... TP'd. Yeah. But just being there in general, if he decided to firefly to look for a pickoff behind the tower, then AA is just gonna tank the gang. Yeah. Sure. And I like doesn't... the idea behind it though. Yeah, he's not able to deter the push, but he took Aff and Ninja down to almost half of her health and maybe bought some time for his team on that bottom lane. So, we'll see what they manage to make of this, but Roshan and everybody looking for that, gonna be a longer than average spawn time. Ursa has the Abyssal Blade up. I don't even know if it's enough. It feels like they've been doing a really good job. Well, one, these team fights have actually been pretty back and forth. It's just HR have taken the loss too. It feels like attack. as long as they get the Winter's Curse off on a good target, HR is winning these engagements. Yeah, that's a huge deterrent. Like when you can't just clump up and commit to a target, which I feel like they kind of have to. As soon as the DP gets her ulti off, you either have to burst her down or piece it. But it's really hard to get away. It's really hard to clump up because of the Winter's Curse. Yeah, and it especially is painful because you're running heroes like Duminosa against melees. They have to come in for some of this. So, a little bit rough. And I think that, obviously, whoever gets the jump has a favorable engagement. But Vega have shown that even though they got the jump, they've gotten the Dooms out on decent targets a few times, still having a really rough time. And all of this dewarding. Oh goodness, we have a jump in onto Afa Ninja. She doesn't have the exorcism off. Doom's trying to go, but Havost coming in with the slithering crush, but Pasha Bashu is there. The immediate shallow grave. They know Havost is in for a world of pain, but he is dead. He is hit by that AA blast, and yeah, Solo gonna end up getting the kill. Can they get further pickoffs? They glimpse back, goddamn, no TP away from you. The immediate Winter's Curse, but Seema the Slayer, he's taking a lot of damage. I don't know if it's enough, and now Afa Ninja popping that exorcism. Goddamn, isolated on the back lines. Gonna go down. Will it be soon? enough though for Pasha Bashu. Shallow Grave on Afa Ninja as well. Picks off Pasha Bashu. Havos coming back in. Can he catch off Seema the Slayer? They managed to kill off. Oh gosh, there's two fights going on. We'll watch Seema the Slayer fall. We'll watch no one fall as well. And finally, it looks like Doom. He's trying to use that blade mail to kill off Afa Ninja. He gets it, but he also goes down. So, a four for two. Not the fight maybe Vega was looking for, but oh, at least they managed to... And we are roboting, so I am gonna actually call you through Skype. Okay. Yeah, I think TeamSpeak is on its lost legs. I'm just gonna mute our TeamSpeak for a second. Hello? 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 Okay, yeah, sorry. I, I prefer TeamSpeak because normally it robots a bit less than Skype, but it is not being helpful. Okay. But yeah, you were saying about that lost team fight. Oh yeah, gosh, we have a dead solo. You were saying on Slaughter, because Solo's just gonna die. Yeah. They got the Doom on Afro Ninja at the start, which was exactly what they want to have happen, right? They got the pick on Slaughter as well when he tried to help his Dyer's Death Prophet, but by the time they were chasing, Death Prophet's Doom had wore off, Slaughter decided to buy back, and they yeah. took a really favorable fight. I have to say, the saving grace maybe that you forced a buyback out of Slaughter, it's gonna slow down that AC, but I don't know what you do here as the Queen of Pain. She's looking for the Shivas, I think, trying to tank up. She could also buy an AC, but they are just so squishy, and they're doing a fantastic job on the lineup of HR, taking advantage of 
Queen of Pain, she has a BKB, but she's still not a tank. It turns out the Batrider's opting for an Octarine instead. Oh my goodness, wasn't expecting that at, either, at all. Mag does pop the BKB. We've got an uh, easy Roshan from Ursa, and he gets the Aegis. Winter's Curse coming out on him too, but the Exorcism, it's out, and now Mag is going to melt like butter. Seema the Slayer taking a lot of damage too. Afeninde will be hit by an Aegis Blast, and now they're turning it around. Not able to secure those kills. Havost is doomed up on the sidelines as well, but now he's got his sprint up. Can they get the auto-attack damage? The glimpse, it's going to BKB'd off. Well then. Really nice attempt yeah. from Seema, but the BKB just doing work. Havost also stole the cheese. I'm really surprised that this game's constantly going back and forth. Every time I feel like Hellraisers are in a good position, because they've just taken one or two favorable fights, Vega just managed to come back and execute. Yeah. Um, it's... It's been really back and forth. This game much more even than I was expecting. I have to say, coming into it, I did research, you know, and Vega much more favored. And I have to imagine these teams play a bunch as well. And since Vega's been showing such dominant form recently, and HR's just had a lot of roster shuffles, I didn't expect them to put out such a good fight. But goddamn, good as always. Might actually die here. Yeah, goes down to the Sonic Wave from no one. Um... Bit liberal with that, but they if you get a Rax, it doesn't matter if you used your 130 second cooldown. At the same time, Slaughter trying to see what he can get on the back line, but he's caught out by Seema. Has to use that BKB to get out of the kinetic field. On the upside, they're no longer working on your Rax, but that's an Abyssal Blade. He eats the G's at the last second, and we've got a pull onto Pashu Bashu. Havost still being kited around. Pashu Bashu in a bit of a bad spot, but I think Havost will be the first to die. And now Dazzle, dead, before he can say anything, gets the Shallow Grave off on Havost. Can he pick off no one? Looks like no one's gonna be fighting now. Bashu Bashu looking to turn it around. A blast hits on no one, but does mean that people have to back out of Winter's Curse to pick off no one. Mag is also in a bad spot. Can Dominator get something while he's glimpsed back into an awful position? No, but it looks like Goddamn gonna save himself by some time. Finally goes down. Pashu Bashu's still alive. He's been playing this game on a slither of health. Slither? Slither? Either one. English is complicated. And yeah, we're going to be seeing that uh, we've got some buybacks. Let's see if they can make it work. They still have the exorcism up. Can Affininji do anything here? If you just run ham at them, you're just going to fall. You might take an Abyssal Blade to the face, but it's on cooldown and the Enrage. And Pashu Bashu doesn't pop it. He's waiting for the Aegis. Going to see what they can do. But now, with the Static Storm on top of Affininji, is there any hope? She manages to Ethereal. Oh gosh, no, she's pulled right back into the AA Blast. She is standing there, outputting a lot of damage, but she needs to push it on to Mag. And Mag, no, he doesn't go down in time. They're losing a round here for the lineup of HR and it's looking pretty damn grim for them. Yeah, without any buybacks that's definitely Radiant double racks. Unfortunately there's the tier 2 bottom so they can't look for the third. Yeah and I feel like HR they don't have the easiest lineup for coming back against supers. Certainly not against Radiant Megas but they do have a lot of wave clear with the Batrider with Death Prophet. It's not easy to use Radiant but this may have just been Vega sealing out the first Radiant's game. Top barracks has fallen. Yeah, they just out-executed around the pit, I feel like. Yeah. And as I said earlier, the, they could make a few more mistakes because as soon as Hellraiser used the Exorcism, they just couldn't get too much more. Like, if they want to fight with it too far away from a tower or too far away from Roche, it took them too long to get Roche, which let Vega have time to respond. So, gonna be probably looking like uh one well vegas at a definitely at a dominant advantage now when this girl settles down i think maybe even ten thousand experience still very close but certainly a lead for vega we're definitely at the point in the game though it feels like where if they do take a bad team fight on vega maybe if they don't have buybacks they're all gonna die uh they they could lose a lot of structures is what i mean uh, i think for that to happen though they need exorcism on Death Prophet for the fight, and then they need it to take the buildings as well. So, he, for that to happen, he needs a refresher, which he's very far away from. Yeah. So, gets really rough here. And no one, even though I would argue no one not having one, well, he is 12 and 6. It does feel like he's been dying a bit in odd places, but 12 and 6 and 14, no one's clearly having a good game. Just maybe not as good as compared to some of his other dominant performances on this hero. He's not shining as much as he normally does, but it's a hard game for him. But he's definitely had his impact. Yeah, doing very well there. And Goddamn does end up going for the Blink Dagger on the Wyvern. 
Not feeling like there's easy options here. The Also, this ethereal blade, oh, sorry, this ghost scepter on Death Prophet feels really risky. I think he has to get it, just because even the pop does decent physical damage right now. But as you say, it is kind of risky. Yeah, they're going for a desperate smoke, trying to get the wraparound, I think, on this push bottom. We've seen when HR gets the jump in these fights, but they might not... Oh, they have to know that they're all smoked up behind no one. And they're going to break that smoke. Now they're going in. The immediate Lotus Ult, but it was too late. The Yules is flying on both sides. Avan Ninja touched by that ult. Now is in a really bad spot, but Havo is trying to pick up Solo. One more hit will do it. Mag is Winter's Coast up as well. I don't think HR have this team fight, and everybody's dead. There's a gem on the deck, and this might just be a GG call after Havost goes down. He's trying to TP out. Can he make it? No. They drop the abyssal to ensure it. And that's I, GG. I want to give mad props to Seema there. As soon as the smoke broke, he Lotus Storbed Pasha and yeah. it reflected the Yules from Afro Ninja and then he instantly got hexed. So he couldn't get the exorcism off. As hopeful as that fight was, they definitely still had a chance if it went well. But Vega just cleaning up at the end. So I would say very well played from both teams. We'll be getting ourselves into a game too right quick, but I think maybe HL maybe just want to pick a lineup with a bit later game potential. I can understand if that's like their comfort zone, but I'd agree. They need to be able to scale more and just have the ability to make one or two mistakes or not rely so heavily on one ultimate to be able to do everything. Yeah, so looks like we'll see what they decide to bring us in the next game, and I will get us into that right quick, folks. First, we'll have some words from... Still a lot of sponsors, so hope you all enjoy. Once again, though, I'm Llama Down Under, joined by PQMZ. We're always looking to improve. We'd love your feedback. You can hit us up at Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Llama Down Under. PQMZ doesn't do the social media yet, so you can give me your feedback for him as well, and we're looking forward to it. See you in game two. Exciting battles.